Hello, and welcome to Elaine A. Power's Reptile Side Chat. Today, we're going to talk about poop, feces, scat, and what it can tell you about the animals. And in this particular case, my iguanas and my omnivore tortoises. Now the study of feces in animals is called scatology or copology. And you can learn an awful lot about what comes out after the food has gone in. And in many cases, it can help and keep your neighbors uh, friendly towards each other. Out here in the Sonoran Desert, we find canine poop of some variety on our uh, sidewalks and our roads and our, our driveways. And you may be all ready to blame your neighbors for not cleaning up after their dogs. But in fact, if you look at the scat that's left, it may have seed pods and plant vegetation in it. And that way you know it was the coyotes. And you can't get upset with the coyote for leaving poop behind. So today, I'd like to talk to you about what comes out of an iguana after it's eaten. Now, iguanas are herbivores, and uh, it comes, the uh, poop and feces comes out of the cloaca, and the cloaca is very important. It's also used for reproduction and stuff, but it tends to be this nice, let's see if I can get, there we go, okay, um, firm, but moist, and you notice that little white crystal at the end, those are the urates. Uh, so they come out as uric acid and they crystallize there. Now there's another po component to the feces and that's this white gooey looking stuff. And uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of creamy, you know, it, it, it's wet but a little gooey and that's their urine now you may be saying well you know it, it looks a little thick why is it that thick it's because reptiles often get most if not all of their water out of their food so they're not going to waste any of it uh, in pooping so they concentrate their urine and until it's this nice gooey mixture um, that they they squirt out so that's one thing you can tell. If your reptile is well hydrated, it'll be more watery than, you, than, uh, than thick and gooey. Because the problem is, is that if they're not getting enough water, the urates can form hard stones. And uh, this is some dried urates. And what pr happens is that builds up inside the animal and can prevent them from voiding. You know, that they can't get their feces out. They, they can't get the urine out. And then you have to get uh, veterinary uh, interaction. You know, you can soak them and sometimes that'll make them uh, get a little smaller, but oftentimes you have to take your reptile to the vet and have them remove the stones. Now, other animals, now in um, the iguanas and the tortoises, because they're vegetarians, the poop tends to be sort of greenish brown um, but not all of my lizards such as the tegu are uh, vegetarians uh, they're more meat eaters and so you know the, the urine part that comes out can be different colors like uh, his is yellowish so I can always tell when he's pooped now uh, one way like I said, you know, it, the, the poop is very important in studying animals. For one thing, it can help you identify the presence of an animal. Now, in one of my citizen scientist work, we would go out looking for iguanas. Well, the first thing we would notice is, was there scat around? If there was scat around, we knew the iguanas were around. And um, not only that, but depending on the size of the scat, you can tell what species of animal is around. Now this is the, the scat of my omnivore tortoises. If I were to come and, and find a large clump of fibrous, grassy-looking stuff, 
I would know that my sulcata tortoises had left it because they're primarily grass eaters and so they don't have this nice smooth um, poop coming out. Now you can see this is kind of um, thinnish and the size of the poop depends on the size of the cloaca which is determined by the size of the iguana. Now my tortoises, my omnivore eating tortoises, they're poop size is a little bigger because their cloacas are a little bigger. Uh, they still have that urate crystallization at, at the tip of their, their poop. Um, and so what else can you find out from the scat? Well, if you take the scat apart, you know, and, and kind of tease it apart, scientists can discover just what it is the animal ate. And so you can actually identify some of the plants that the iguana ate. And this is less invasive than, than trying to rinse out the stomach contents of an iguana. You just go along behind, pick up the poop, take it back and tease it apart and see what plants you can identify. And this has also demonstrated the importance of iguanas and tortoises and other plant-eating reptiles as seed dispersers. Because even though they might eat the fruit, the seeds pass through and are left behind and now a little uh, plop of fertilizer. And in many cases, the seeds are already germinating by the time they get out of the iguana or the tortoise or whatever um, herb herbivacious or herbivorous reptiles has eaten it. Um, you can tell by the consistency a little bit about the health of the creature. These are nice and firm. If they had been runny, you'd know that there's something going on on the insides of the guana that might need uh, attention. You can find parasites. Uh, you can look, you know, look for parasite eggs um, and to find internal parasites that way. If it's too hard, you know that your iguana is not getting enough moisture in its diet and maybe need to in up the water intake or soak them a little. Um, now, one thing that is of concern to, to public health is it's known that lower vertebrates may carry salmonella. And so that is passed along in the feces of the animal. So that's why you have to have good husbandry and clean up after animals so that you're not leaving the possible salmonella around. Uh, by lower vertebrates, we mean reptiles, but we also mean chickens. So um, if you're eating chickens, you don't really need to be too afraid of handling a reptile. Always wash your hands after handling any animal, uh, especially a reptile. Try not to kiss your reptiles too much uh, and pick up salmonella that way. And for heaven's sakes, don't let your children put small turtles, small tortoises, iguanas in their mouths. They're to be held and then their hands cleaned immediately. Matter of fact, that's what we were using hand sanitizer for a lot before the pandemic came along. Um, so, you know, always use good husbandry when dealing with any animal. Now, you may be saying, well, okay, why is this important? Well, my reptiles are not housebroken, well, at least not most of them. But they do have their favorite spots to defecate. Often it's beside me where I'm sitting so I can clean it up immediately, or it's one spot in a room that they will come to every day, defecate, get on their way. Now I did have one iguana who was in fact house trained. If you run a reptile like an iguana under warm water in the shower, they'll usually defecate. The, the rain in nature is what helps keep them clean and, and wash away their feces. So she got to, uh, when she wanted to go to the bathroom, she knew that the bathtub was where she was supposed to do it. And she would be able to go even if I didn't run the shower. So what I did is I put a bath mat over the edge of the bathtub. When Noelle had to go, she just run into the bathroom, climb up the bath mat, do her business, climb back out of the bath mat, which had the nice uh, job of wiping her clean as she went over, and then she'd come back out. Uh, and you can do that with many reptiles, is actually get them to defecate poop in one particular place that you would like. 
water dishes are always popular in pooping places. So even though they don't drink a lot of water out of that water dish, it's important to have a nice wide shallow one so that they can at least poop in it and that keeps their enclosure clean. Now um, there are, they have been using the DNA that can be isolated from scat to look at the genetic health of reptiles. Do all the reptiles in the area have the same genetics or is there some genetic variability which there should be in a population? And this helps in the conservation and the, the protection of our reptile populations. So I have one iguana who who's, was will, hopefully is willing to demonstrate the pooping technique of an iguanas. Now, because of the fibrosis that has built up in his, around his hind legs, he really isn't able to defecate fully by himself. So I will take him in the shower or even just hold him up and, and he will, and then I squeeze him gently and he will defecate. So I have to detach him from the, the pan. Yes. Okay, so, so you've met Ezra. Yes, you've met Ezra before. And I'm going to put a big pan down here. Now he's actually started pooping. Um, okay, got to have a little technical difficulties here. Okay, so he's already started pooping, so get him up here so that uh, you can see him. All right, okay, go for it. So, so there's the liquidy part, the urine that's coming out. You see how some of it's uh, the more whitish, thickish stuff. Okay, I'm going to go a little more. All right. Hopefully I can get him to more out, okay. And then uh, sometimes one of the problems is, is if they don't have enough moisture in their feces and the feces that's coming out is, is hard, they will prolapse. And then uh, that means that the inner part of their stomach uh, come, or not, but intestines or his lower intestines come out, but you can see how it's a nice big clump and he will just go until he's got it all out. And we have to do this once or twice a week. He's a good eater, so I have to help him get it empty. Oh, and you see, now you may have noticed that there's some, you heard that clunk? That's because he, he's got some crystallization in there. So um, he may be needing a little more soaking uh, so that we don't have this again in the future. And then he has the rest of his urine out. And then he's a nice empty iguana. And I don't know if you noticed how, how much he's kind of deflated since we did this. So now you've actually seen the defecating process of a green iguana, a little more up close and personal than perhaps you ever desired. And it's going to say that even though he does have lots of water in his urine and his uh, feces are, are nicely formed, there were some hard chunks in there, so he probably will need to soak a bit more in this coming week. So. I hope I have satisfied some of your questions and curiosity about scat, poop, feces, and defecation of reptiles. Thank you for joining in for this most unusual reptile side chat. Until next time, I'm Elaine A. Powers. Check out my website at elaineapowers.com and lyricpower.net and sign up to get my newsletter so that you can stay on top of all the exciting topics and activities that we have here at uh, Elaine A. Powers Bed and Breakfast for Reptiles. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe. Every time you comment or share one of my videos, it helps me make more videos. And the more videos I make, the more people we reach.
the more people who know about Thank you.